Within the household, the unwritten class divisions are thrown into turmoil. Hi friends, welcome back with an amazing video from Rolling Movie Recaps. Today I'm going to recap a 2015 drama and comedy film titled The Second Mother. Spoiler warning, watch out and take care. The film opens with Vale, appears as a young woman in a pool, supervising a small boy. She requests to talk with someone on the phone and it turns out to be her hesitant daughter. Vale wraps Vabino in a towel and embraces him on her lap as he exits the pool and inquires about his mother's whereabouts. Vale, now in her 40s, still nourishes and adores Fabino, who is now a late adolescent. Vale works as a live-in housekeeper for Dr. Carlos and his opulent wife, Dona Barbara. Vale, a Pernamumkin mother, relocates to Sao Paulo in order to give a better life for her daughter, Jessica. Vale relocates to a different city and leaves her daughter with a nanny. Vale works as a live-in housemaid for a wealthy family in Sao Paulo, where she also looks for the family's only child, Fabino. Although Fabino and Vale enjoy a close relationship, it comes at the expense of her bond with her daughter, who remains in Pernabunco and is enraged by her mother's constant absence. Vale and Fabino have such a strong bond that it appears as if he's her own kid. Vale receives a call from Jessica as she approaches 18, asking if she can stay with her for a short time while she prepares and takes the admission exam to the University of Sao Paulo. Vale is taken aback by the fact that her daughter's called her. Vale is taken aback because she hasn't spoken to her daughter in some years. Vale, who lives with the family for whom she cleans, seeks their permission to allow Jessica to stay with her while she looks for an apartment for the two of them. The head of the house, Dona Barbara, gives her consent. Jessica will not be staying at Dona Barbara's house for an extended period of time, according to Dona Barbara. Vale feels tense as she goes to pick up Jessica from the airport because she hasn't seen her daughter in 10 years and doesn't recognize her. Jessica also wishes to go straight to Vale's house without seeing her bosses, as she's taken aback when she discovers that Vale lives with her bosses and expects her to share a tiny room with them. When there's a guest room in the house, she refuses to stay in Vale's tight and little room. When Jessica first comes, there's a sense of uneasiness and tension as her presence begins to test the social class barriers in the house. First, when Jessica suggests that she should stay in the guest room because she's a visitor, and then when she eats at the same table as Don Carlos and partakes in their cuisine. Vale becomes irritated with her daughter and her disregard for the house rules, while Jessica, outraged at the way her mother's treated, continues to break them. Jessica will be perplexed as to why she must respect social class distinctions. She continues to remind Vale that they're all equal and that no social class distinction should exist. Moment, as where Carlos gets closer to Jessica, the cumbersomeness proceeds, where Carlos, not at all like his spouse, is unconcerned amongst Jessica remaining with them. He's the one who demands on her remaining within the visitor room instead of Vale's little hireling's quarters, where Carlos has sentimental affections for Jessica, which is clearly indicated all through the motion picture, where Carlos offers to require her to the Edificio Copen when he notices that she's fascinated by design. Don Carlos tries to kiss Jessica as they stand there looking out over Sao Paulo. She refuses his overtures and only a phone call from his wife, Dona Barbara, who's in the hospital after an accident, breaks the awkwardness. Don Carlos discovers Jessica alone in the kitchen later that night. He gets down on one knee and proposes to her on the spot. When she at first decays his proposition, he reacts with guarantees of endowments and outlandish excursions illustrating he possesses convictions on lesson. When it shows up that Jessica will dismiss his proposition, he tries to create the complete circumstance appear crazy. Jessica concurs, but following her dismissal, she shows up to be less satisfied with her nearness within the house. The issue comes to a breaking point when Jessica is found within the pool with Fabino and a buddy. The spouse is angry and tells Vale to keep an eye on her girl and make beyond any doubt she doesn't go through the kitchen entryway. Jessica's infuriated when she learns of this, and she's disillusioned that her mother doesn't protect her nobility. She escapes and finds a flat for herself. Later, Fabino discovers that he failed the entrance exam for the university of his choice, the same one that Jessica applied to and was accepted to. Dona Barbara is envious of Vale's daughter because she passed the exam while her son failed. She informs her kid that he needs to study more diligently in the coming year. After hearing such news, he chooses to take a six-month vacation in Australia. 
Donna Barbara can't stand the thought that her kid encompasses a more grounded bond with Vale than with her, in spite of the reality that she's his organic mother. Vale, disturbed that she's clearing out, stops her work to be with her kid, inclining toward not remaining within the house with the guardians. When Donna Barbara asks as to why Vale is incapable to remain, Vale reacts that she must care for her child. In spite of Donna Barbara and Jessica's issues, Donna Barbara tells Vale that she figures it out how vital it is for Vale to be displayed for her child. Vale enters the swimming pool, which has been off limits to her for the whole time within the house, as a last act of insubordination, sometime recently rejoining her girl. Jessica, she shouts enthusiastically. Advising her that she's currently standing in the pool that resulted in Jessica's banishment from the house, Vale laughs and splashes around in the pool, defying the unwritten norms that have guided her life for the past two decades. Vale moves in with her daughter shortly after that, telling her that they'll be together for the rest of their lives and that she'll not be leaving this time. Vale discovers she has a grandson, Jorge, after a brief argument, and that Jessica is doing the same thing with him as she did with her. Vale will not let her daughter do the same with her grandson because she knows how difficult it is to be separated from her own child. She tells Jessica to go get her son back from home and bring him back so they can all live together as a family, and she's overjoyed by the news. Donna Barbara, played by Tellus, is a master at being condescending, and Weilert's writing for her is right on. Barbara tacks on a final inquiry or directive about Vale cooking moose, lasagna, or pie every time Vale bids goodbye as she rushes off, or vice versa. Barbara's directives are delivered with a nobleness obliged by Tellus, who's smart and sharp performance. Dr. Carlos is imbued with a sad, deep-seated foolishness and desire by Lorenco Mutarelli, best known in Brazil as a maker of underground comics. When Jessica expresses her admiration for one of his paintings, she elicits a strangely sweet but progressively disturbing response. Weilert and her entire creative team, including cinematographer Barbara Alvarez, production designer Tails Kunchiera, and editor Karen Harley, infuse this picture with a vibrant, imagistic quality. Weilert and Alvarez add richness and immediacy to locations as diverse as an airport security queue, a tight, hot maid's room with a TV blaring and a fan blowing, and a socialite's house. Vale, dressed up in a pretentious, lace-trimmed party server outfit, serving hors d'oeuvres to a houseful of blasé visitors on Barbara's birthday, is a knowing Mad Magazine parody of all the post-Goodfellas steadicam shots of people swooping into a posh celebration or nightclub. Vale's stiff back is the focus of Moilert and company as she carries her tray into the gathering. They then follow her jerky head as she waits on everyone from the kitchen door to the patio, passing through the dining room and living room. Instead of synchronizing one flowing movement to the soundtrack's bossa nova, these filmmakers halt, swerve and reposition their camera while Vale lurches about to make sure she hasn't missed anyone. We hope you enjoyed our video from today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications of new and interesting videos.